Several of you have asked whether or not you should use biochar in the garden. So let's have a close look at it. Biochar is supposed to hold nutrients. It holds water. It sequesters carbon in the soil. And it makes plants grow better. I mean, this sounds like the perfect thing to put into your garden. So let's have a close look at what it is. How does it work? Does it really make plants grow better? And finally, should gardeners use it in their soil? I'm going to discuss a number of research studies and summaries of research studies in this program. If you'd like to actually see the studies, hop on over to my blog, gardenmist.com. Go to the top right-hand corner and search for biochar, and that will bring up the article that discusses biochar in detail. And it has lots of links for you to look at. One of the big mistakes we make when discussing these topics is that we never define what we're talking about. Lots of discussions about biochar. I've never seen anyone ask the question, what is it? So let's first define it. And when I started researching biochar, I thought this would be pretty simple. It turned out it really isn't. Now, pretty much everyone agrees that it's charcoal that's made from organic plant material, including things like manure. It could be made from wood. It can also be plant refuge, that brown stuff that's laying around on the ground in the fall. You can gather that up and use it to make biochar. Well, let's go to the experts. The UC Davis Biochar Database and Wikipedia define biochar as material that's used for incorporating into soil and not used for heating. That's not a very useful definition. Many people claim that biochar has to be made without a lot of oxygen around it, in an anaerobic environment. And that's compared to, say, burning wood in a fireplace that has lots of oxygen. By making it without oxygen, you get a much better structure of carbon and it's much more stable. So they say. Well, what do some other experts say? The International Biochar Initiative says that it's produced at low temperatures and then goes on to define these as less than 700 degrees centigrade. The UK Biochar Research Centre says it should be made above 250 degrees centigrade in a zero oxygen environment. It goes on to say in general, higher pyrolysis temperatures mean a smaller amount of char. Others say the temperature has to be over 500 degrees centigrade. So clearly some people think that the temperature is important when you're making this material, but they can't agree on what that temperature should be. The bottom line here is that there is no definition for biochar. Anyone who tells you, oh, I know what biochar is and goes on to explain it, doesn't actually know what they're talking about. They have a definition, but that doesn't mean their definition agrees with everybody else's definition. Now, we've all seen charcoal, either in a fire pit, or maybe you've gone out and bought some charcoal for making steaks. So what's the difference between charcoal and biochar? Well, I've done quite a bit of research into this, and I've come to the conclusion that the difference depends on what you do with it. So if we're going to heat steaks and make baked potatoes with it, it's charcoal. If we're going to add it to our soil, we call it biochar. There really doesn't seem to be a lot of difference between charcoal and biochar. Now, there are some people that say biochar has to be made with a certain amount of oxygen near it. And there are tables to show you what that oxygen range should be. And if it's in the wrong range, they call it charcoal. And if it's in the right range, they call it biochar. But again, we come back to the fact that nobody agrees on these charts. The bottom line is that we don't know what biochar is, except that it started as organic material. It was heated with or without oxygen, and it ends up this black material. Other than that, we can't agree on what it is. And that's a fundamental problem because that means that anybody can create it any way they want, put it in a bag and call it horticultural biochar. And when you buy biochar, you have no idea what you're getting and you can't compare one brand to another. Now, that's a real problem because if we pick up a research paper and they say, oh, we use char of a certain type, you can't get that char 
So even if theirs worked, it doesn't mean the one you bought down the street is going to work for you. This is a big red flag. So what are the claims for biochar? Well, here's the ones I've been able to find. It increases yields of vegetables. It increases fertilizer efficiency. It removes pollutants and pesticides. It mitigates climate change. It increases soil moisture. It increases soil pH. It increases soil micropopulation. It increases the CEC, that is the cation exchange of soil. Now, if you go and look at these claims and look for studies for these claims, you'll find that almost all of them were done in a lab. So what they do is they take some biochar, they treat it a certain way in artificial pots with artificial soil, and they come to a conclusion. There are very few studies that make such claims when biochar is actually used out in the field. Now, one thing we do know about charcoal is that it does absorb chemicals. So the fact that it absorbs pollutants is really no surprise. Charcoal is used as a filtering agent to take chemicals out of water. I'm also not surprised that it absorbs nutrients. Now, there is a claim, too, that the little pockets inside the biochar is a great place for microbes to live, and that's probably true, too, provided they get enough food in there. It's also probably true that adding biochar to acidic soil will increase the pH. So does biochar increase plant growth? Does, does it increase the yield? Now, there have been a number of studies that looked at plant growth and yield. And what they found was that about half of them increased the yield, 20% of them decreased the yield, and 30% had no effect at all. Several of these studies were actually lab studies, so the plants were grown in pot. The studies that looked at biochar in the field found mixed results. And it seems as if sometimes biochar does increase plant growth, but it depends very much on the soil that it's used in. It also depends very much on what kind of other amendments you put in with it. Many of the studies mixed fertilizer in there along with the biochar. And so we're not really clear how much of this effect is due to the biochar and how much is due to the fertilizer. A four-year study looking at growing vegetables in a simulated backyard garden at three different locations found mixed results, some increases and some decreases. The bottom line is that the studies show that it might work in some situations. Now remember, every one of these studies uses a different type of biochar. So we have variability in the biochar, we have variability in the soil, and we have variability in how it was actually applied. None of these studies have been repeated often enough with enough variables to figure out which are the important variables that actually make this work. So right now it's kind of a crapshoot. It may work or it may not work for increasing plant growth. Now, a lot of proponents of biochar say that you have to charge it before you put it in the soil. So this charging process means that you take the biochar and you put in some nutrients. Now, you can do that by mixing the biochar in with some compost. The compost has nutrients. Some people just soak it in a fertilizer solution. Other people make compost tea and soak it in that tea. So why do they charge the biochar? Well, the charcoal has a lot of negatively charged sites on it. It's like a little magnet. And most of our nutrients are positively charged. They're cation. They get attracted to the charcoal and they attach to it. So now the biochar is surrounded by nutrients. And we put that into the soil. So we're adding a lot of nutrients. And of course, if a plant is growing nearby, it has access to those nutrients and it grows better. So it should be no surprise that charging biochar actually results in better growth. On the other hand, if you don't charge your biochar and you put it in the soil, it will suck nutrients from the soil into the biochar. And therefore, it might keep nutrients away from plants. So you can see the way you actually apply the biochar to your garden may actually be important. But how does this affect the garden long term? Once the charcoal is in there and it's sort of surrounded by all these nutrients, I think long term it just becomes a place for nutrients to hang out. And the same thing happens with compost. One of the reasons we add compost to soil 
is that it is also negatively charged and it holds on to these cations, these nutrients. That's one of the benefits of organic matter in the soil. Well, if organic matter and biochar do the same thing with nutrients, why are we using biochar? Why not just use organic matter? Now let's return to the question of this plant growth. If I take my biochar and I put it in soil and I see improved plant growth, was that due to the charcoal that I've added? Or is it due to the nutrients that I use to charge the biochar. It's quite possible that what I've really done is just fertilized my plants and they grew better. The other big benefit of using biochar is that it's good for the environment. The biochar is made out of carbon. And now we're going to take this carbon, put it in the soil, and this carbon apparently lasts for hundreds and maybe thousands of years. So in effect, we're taking CO2 from the air. The plant is absorbing it, creating organic matter. We take that, we turn it into charcoal, and we put it in the soil, and it's sequestered. It's stored there for a long period of time. That's good for the environment. It reduces CO2 in the air and puts it into the soil for safekeeping. That's the way the story goes. So does this really happen? Well, the first thing we have to realize is that to make biochar, we have to heat it up. So we're burning fuel to make biochar. When we burn fuel, we produce CO2, and that is added to the air. Now we have the biochar, and we put it in the soil. So what happens to that? There are very few field trials that have actually looked at this, but from the ones that have researched it, they're finding that the carbon level in the soil is not increasing. So even though we take dump trucks load of biochar and put it on these fields and then measure it a couple years later, we don't see that there's actually any increase in carbon in the soil. And it's not quite clear why. It's possible that the biochar is degrading and microbes are consuming it and turning it into CO2. It may not be as stable as we think. It's also possible that all of these sites around the biochar, all these little cavities are great for microbes and they live there. And they become more active and they decompose the organic matter fast and that releases CO2 to the air. Now this was all very surprising to me because I figured biochar or charcoal is very stable and sinking it into the soil should keep it there. Some of the studies did increase the level of carbon. Uh, some stayed the same and others seen a decrease. So given these limited studies, we have to conclude that making biochar and putting it in the soil is actually not good for the environment. It is not going to reduce the CO2 in the air, and therefore it's not going to help global warming. Can you make biochar at home? There's lots of videos online that show you how to make this great biochar. Some of them are just burning wood and getting charcoal out of them. Others build special ovens to keep the oxygen out. But remember one thing, we don't actually even know what biochar is. So we don't know which of these methods are making the good stuff and which are making the bad stuff. What we do know is that you're heating this material and that heating process produces CO2. And we don't know whether the biochar you're gonna produce is any good. So I don't think this is a good idea for home gardeners. Should you use biochar in a potting mix? There is a study that shows that biochar in inhibits seed germination. So don't use it in a pot where you're trying to germinate seeds. All right, down to the final question. Should you use biochar? There are lots of claims it does things for the garden. There's lots of claims that it grows better plants. The science on this is not very clear. It may, it may do lots of good things for your garden if you have the right biochar. But since we don't even have a definition for biochar, there are no standards for the material that goes into a bag that's called biochar. You have no idea what you're buying. It may be good stuff. It may be bad stuff. In most cases, I suspect it's going to make very little difference to your soil. Now, the one thing that is clear, once you've added that biochar to your soil, you can't get rid of it. So for that reason alone, I would not use biochar. You can get almost all the benefits of biochar by using organic matter, particularly compost. Compost doesn't have the potential problems that biochar has, so use compost. I hope that you've enjoyed this program on biochar. 
One of the clean benefits is that it helps your microbes grow, but I have better ideas for doing that, and those are described in this video right here. And if you want to learn more about how to make better soil, how to make your soil healthier, there's a whole bunch of videos right here. Happy gardening.